Hi guys, this is Miss Stam from Breezy, and today we're going to talk about El Nino and La Nina, the problem children of the Pacific. You already know that the temperature of the ocean affects the climate of the nearby land. The warm Gulf Stream warms the east coast of North America and also Europe. It allows hurricanes to form in the Atlantic Ocean. In order for a hurricane to form, the ocean surface temperature needs to be about 26 degrees Celsius or 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The cool California current cools and dries the coast of California, making the climate pleasant and sunny in the summer. But what happens to the climate if the temperature of an ocean changes? Can you have flooding or droughts? Let's look at this picture of Pacific sea surface temperatures. Normally we have trade winds near the equator blowing from east to west. This pushes warmer water to the west near Australia and Indonesia. We have an upwelling that brings cooler water near South America. You'll notice warm for red, blue for cool. An upwelling is a deep cold water which rises towards the surface displacing the warmer nutrient depleted water with cooler nutrient rich water. When we have El Nino conditions our trade winds slow. Warmer water from the west moves east towards South America. So what do you think happens? The warmer water near South America brings increased precipitation for parts of North and South America. This includes Texas. The shift in the warm water brings drought to Australia and Indonesia. Flooding is much more likely to occur in the Southwest United States, including Texas, during the El Nino conditions. When warm ocean water evaporates very quickly over a widespread area, clouds can form so rapidly that they result in large storms such as hurricanes. Remember that hurricanes require warm water to form. During El Nino, more hurricanes develop due to the warmer ocean water temperatures. Now let's look at the La Nina conditions. In La Nina, the trade winds get stronger we have cool water from South America that spreads west along the equator. We have more warm water that pools near Indonesia and Australia. So what do you think happens? The cooler water brings drier conditions and less precipitation to parts of North and South America, including Texas. The pool of warmer water near Indonesia and Australia brings flooding to these areas. Drought is more likely to occur in the southwest United States, including Texas, during La Nina. So why should you care about El Nino and La Nina conditions? Our worst recent El Nino was from 1997 to 1998. During this time, Texas suffered the worst flood of record on the Guadalupe River in October of 1998. You can probably ask people around town or even your family if they remember the flood of 98. The worst recent La Nina was from 2010 to 2011. During this time, Texas suffered a record drought in 2011. This drought killed nearly 2 to 10 percent of the trees in Texas. So where do the names come from? The warmer waters of El Nino conditions usually show up in December. Spanish-speaking fishermen from South America were the first to notice this phenomenon. They named it El Nino because it occurs near Christmas time when baby Jesus, called El Nino, was born. La Nina conditions are opposite as a girl, Nina, is opposite of a boy, Nino. So how can I remember the El Nino conditions? Remember that El Nino is a hot mess problem child of the Pacific Ocean. When El Nino is pitching a crying fit, he steams up the atmosphere. All that excess moisture causes excess precipitation and sometimes flooding.
How can I remember La Nina conditions? La Nina is the calm, cool chick of the Pacific. When she's chilling in the Pacific, the weather is cool and clear. La Nina is so cool that she dries out the air, sometimes causing drought. That's all for El Nino and La Nina. I hope this helps.